Blender has plenty of ways to light your scene. We have point lights, area lights, point lights again, and sunlights. Even though sunlights are borderline useless and won't work with half the things in this video. Technically mesh lights exist too, but I'm not going to talk about those because they're gimmicky and noisy. Oh, and for anyone still using integrated graphics, I can't physically throw up in my mouth. Skip to the end for EV tips because most of this is only going to work for cycles. So, tip number one. Use textures. It's basically free detail and it'll add life to an otherwise boring render. And it really doesn't even matter what image you use, because if you do it right, no one's ever going to know that the main light in this image is a picture of a dog. Anyways, with area lights, newer versions of Blender natively support adding images, so you should be able to just drag and drop. But with an older version, you might have to add this parametric input. Now you can see it's already kind of working in the reflection here, but if you want to focus the light more like a projector, all we have to do is go into the area light settings and change the spread value. After that, you can rotate or scale this however you want. Spotlights aren't difficult either. In older versions of Blender, you needed this weird setup, but now all you should need is a vector math node set to multiply add using these values. And if your texture is repeating and you don't want that, go to your image node and change repeat to clip. Point lights take a little bit more work since inputting the normals directly just gives this weird result where it's trying to wrap the image around but ends up just distorting it. To fix this, we're going to go to our image texture node and change this flat value to box. Now that it's a bit easier to work with, connect a vector math set to absolute, separate the x, y, and z, and then we're going to find the maximum of all three values. Using another vector math node, we're going to divide that by the normals. Then add 0.5 to x and y to center it. Then in between these nodes, we're going to scale that by 0.5. After that, your image should be properly mapped. Now if you want to use an HDRI instead, you don't have to worry about any of this, just make sure you're using an environment texture instead of an image texture. As far as I know, there's no way to add textures to a sunlight, at least not as a projector. You will get a weird effect where you can still see the image in the reflection of objects, but you can't cast the image onto the ground. Sunlights are effectively just adding more information to the skybox. Tip number two is to use blackbody. Now in physics, blackbody is a spectrum of light produced based on the temperature of objects emitting thermal radiation, but all we need to know is that this side is orange and this side isn't. As you increase the value, you should be able to find most naturally occurring light colors, with 6500 Kelvin being the middle ground pure white. Number three is to use light linking. Light linking and shadow linking are found in the object tab under shading. From here, with a light selected, you can drag objects or collections into the light linking or shadow linking boxes. Anything added to the light linking section will change your light source to only affect those objects. The checkbox is used to invert the effect, making it so your light source will affect everything except the unchecked object. Placing an object in shadow linking will make it so this light only casts shadows with this object. Inverting the effect will let the light cast shadows with everything except this object. Number four is to use light paths. In your light's shader graph, get a light path node. If you flip through the different outputs, you'll see most of them don't do anything until we get to the ray length output. The top half of this node is only going to work with mesh materials and not lights, so we're only going to focus on everything that's ray length and below. Starting with the ray length output, its value is based on how far the light ray has traveled. So if I add a greater than or less than node, it'll cap the strength based on how far the light rays traveled. Using a compare node, we can isolate the length of the light ray within a certain threshold. Ray depth deals with how many times the light has bounced or refracted through an object. Using a greater than node, we can see every step the light takes as it bounces through the scene. Diffuse, glossy, transparent, and transmission work the exact same way, but are isolated to the respective light path. 
Though it's important to note, transparent depth only works with transparent BSDF and alpha, whereas transmission depth only works with translucency, glass, and refraction. With the math node, we can use multiply, add, and subtract as functions for and, or, or not. In this example, as long as the ray length is less than this value, and it's through transparent depth, return a value of 1, or in this case, the color orange. Tip number 5 is to use caustics. Caustics can be enabled in the Render tab under Light Paths. Along with making your render more physically accurate, refractive caustics should fix the shadows casted by glass or refraction shaders, and reflective caustics should fix glossy or metallic shaders absorbing too much light. Though anyone who's already used caustics before already knows that it jacks up render times and introduces more noise. So to fix this, here's a quick way to fake both of them. For refractive caustics, add a layer weight node and add both values together. Then we're going to subtract it from 1 to invert the colors. Connect it to the color of a transparent BSDF node. And in between that, we're going to add a color ramp node. Mix that with your glass shader. And for the factor, we're going to use shadow ray from the light path node. Lastly, we're going to tweak the color ramp node, changing the white value from 1 to 2. What this does is any light passing through the transparent shader actually gets brighter. This will help mimic the effect of light refracting into one point. For reflective caustics, all you need to do is add a diffuse shader and mix that with your glossy shader using the diffuse ray from the light path node. If you want to increase the effect, we can again increase the diffuse shader's white value to a number higher than one. I have two methods to create a projector in Eevee, each with their own pros and cons. This first one's a bit of a setup, but it creates the best result. To start, add in an image plane. Delete the default principled shader and replace it with transparency. After that, go into the Object tab, scroll to the bottom, and create a new custom property. We're going to make this a float array with a subtype of linear color. Give it a name, and you're done. Back in the shader graph, add an attribute node with the same name. Then multiply it with your image using a mix color node. Now we're going to add in the spotlight, and what we're looking for is the shadow it's casting. I'm going to extrude the plane to prevent any light bleeding. Now go back to your image, and set the custom property we made to red. I'm going to disable all the visibilities except for shadow, so it's easier to work with. We're going to add a hue saturation value node and set the saturation to zero. Then change the spotlight to red. I'm going to parent the spotlight to the box, and then we're going to duplicate this two times, where we'll change the custom property and the spotlight color to green on the second one and blue on the third one. For each spotlight color, we're going to drag the other two colors' boxes into the shadow linking, and then invert them. This will allow each color spotlight to only cast shadows with their box. From there, stack all three boxes on top of each other, and it should be done. If you want to change the lights in any way, select all three, and change the values while holding the Alt key. The other method uses geometry nodes, but this video is getting long enough as it is, so here's some screenshots of what I did, and if you're too lazy to do it yourself, I'll include a link to the blend file somewhere in the description.